The definition of syncope is a reversible loss of consciousness that occurs due to an inadequate blood flow to the brain. Usually, they are characterized by a fast onset, short duration, and a spontaneous recovery. So, first things first, what's the difference between a transient loss of consciousness and syncope? Well, syncope is a form of transient loss of consciousness, which can be divided into loss of consciousness due to head trauma or non-traumatic causes, under which comes syncope. Along with syncope, though, other non-traumatic causes of a transient loss of consciousness include epileptic seizures, psychogenic causes, and rare causes, like subclavian steel syndrome. The problem clinically with syncope is discerning the really serious, and by that I mean potentially lethal, causes of syncope. So the causes are divided into reflex or neural mediated syncope, orthostatic hypotension, and cardiac causes. Under reflex mediated, we have vasovagal syncope, which can be due to orthostatic vasovagal syncope occurring mostly when people stand up, or emotional vasovagal syncope that happens when the patient experiences fear, phobias such as seeing blood, or even pain. Next, we have situational underneath reflex mediated syncope, which includes losing consciousness after defecation, swallowing, micturition, or even coughing. Finally, for reflex syncope, we have carotid sinus syndrome, which is where the carotid baroreceptors react too strongly to detecting an increased pressure, leading to an excessive drop in blood pressure and therefore syncope. An example is when people put their ties on too tightly. Next, we have syncope due to orthostatic hypotension. This can be due to volume depletion, perhaps following hemorrhage, vomiting, diarrhea, or due to autonomic failure. Autonomic failure can be primary due to perhaps older ages or diseases like Parkinson's, or it can be secondary to things like diabetes, amyloidosis, and spinal cord injuries. We may also see orthostatic hypotension that is drug-induced due to vasodilators, diuretics, and even antidepressants. Now we have the ones we really need to identify, the cardiac causes of syncope. The one that is mostly talked about is arrhythmia, which can be either a bradyarrhythmia or a tachyarrhythmia. But we can also have structural problems such as aortic stenosis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, prosthetic valve dysfunction, and even myocardial infarction. Lastly, we can also have problems with the great vessels, including pulmonary emboli and acute aortic dissection. But oftentimes, when people have these conditions, there's more to the clinical picture than just syncope. So how can we work out what caused syncope in one of our patients? In vasovagal syncope, there's usually a prodrome of pallor, sweating or nausea that the patient recognises. So they know they're going to pass out, and therefore they might try to hold on to something, like furniture or a fence. This is why it's also really important to ask for a history from any witnesses, because you'll see that the patient knows they're going to fall down, compared to a cardiac syncope, where they just drop. Situational syncope would likely have some form of pattern such as happening immediately following a specific trigger like defecation or coughing as we already mentioned. Syncope due to orthostatic hypotension might feature in the patient history that the patient feels dizzy when standing up or changing positions. You could test for orthostasis by taking the blood pressure in a supine position meaning lying down then again at timed intervals once they're standing up. If you see a drop of 20 millimeters of mercury in the systolic or 10 millimeters of mercury in the diastolic blood pressure, then it is a positive sign for orthostatic hypotension. Then you need to work out why this is present by looking at the fluid status of the patient to rule out volume depletion and reviewing the drug chart for any signs of drug-induced orthostatic hypotension. Now, when the cause of syncope is cardiac in nature, the history of the fall won't usually have any prodrome. The patient will just drop and hit the floor, very different to vasovagal syncope. You might hear a murmur on physical exam that may give you a further clue that it is cardiac in nature, but an ECG is one of the first things that you'll do. The problem, as you may know, is that you won't always see arrhythmias when you do an ECG. It might be perfectly normal. 
So you might end up doing 24 hour ECG monitoring, known as halter monitoring, in order to increase the chances of capturing this arrhythmia. Another evaluation that's done when suspecting a cardiac cause is echography in order to be able to see any structural defects that might be causing the syncope.